Growing up in Vancouver, I've enjoyed a great career in law, then politics. Since entering broadcasting in 1981, asking questions has been my living. From the moment we first learned about death as a young child, we begin the search. Now I want to train my sights on life's biggest questions. With an open mind, I want to ask different faiths what happens after we die. Welcome to The Search. Hi and welcome. Sufism and Sufi mystics have been a mystery to most people. Is it a dedicated part of the Islamic faith or a combination of multiple influences? My guest today, Bahram Haidari, has been studying Sufism since he was nine years old growing up in Iran. He's written books and produced television shows on the subject, and he joins me in studio. Bahram, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. What is a quick definition of Sufism? Sufism is a reality of religion. So if we can say that uh, it's a reality of Islam, and by Islam we mean submission. So if you look at anything in the world or anybody in the world, everybody is, is submitted. There is nothing that is not, in, uh, in, uh, is not submitted to the will of God. If we look at the planets, they're all spinning. If we look at the nature, they're doing a great job. And we do whatever we are supposed to do. So Sufism is a reality of religion. Usually there is a vacuum or a niche to be filled when something like your philosophy comes along. Uh, what was the niche or, or the need to be filled in Islam? Well, Islam, as I said, is, is a submission. Submission to the will of God. We believe that everyone is submitted because we're born without asking for it and we die without knowledge of it. So the best way to go about uh, Islam is to understand that everybody and everything is an expression or manifestation of God. Once you understand that, you have respect for everything. So when you say, uh, la ilaha illallah, nothing exists but God. That means everybody and everything is an expression of God. And once you are in that position, you know you cannot insult anybody or you cannot be ungrateful to whatever happens. Now, uh, Baram, I'd like to give you a couple of quotes that I picked up when I was looking at this. Uh, one from Sheikh Ahmad Zarouk. And he said, Sufism is a science whose objective is the reparation of the heart and turning it away from all else but God. Sheikh Ahmad ibn Najiba says, it is a science through which one can know how to travel into the presence of the divine, purify one's inner self from filth, and beautify it with a variety of praiseworthy traits. Now, that sounds good, but I'm not sure I quite understand what it means. Do I actually get into the presence of God? Do I see him, feel him, touch him, hear him? Yes, uh, we understand that there is a past and there's a future, but these are all only earthly concepts. Whatever happens, it happens in a presence, what they call hall. So we understand that if we get above our material understanding, we can always be in the presence of God. And that is where uh, we can see the reality and we can have respect for it. Our understanding is, uh, once you die, you will be in that position. Your eye will, be, will open to that reality. So the best thing to do through your practice and your deed, if you can come to that understanding while you're alive. Uh, so we, you hear lots of concepts, for example, shaheed or martyrdom in Islam. It's a bad translation. We don't have martyrdom. Shaheed comes from uh, seeing, from witnessing. So that means everybody can witness God, witness the presence of God while they are alive. You don't have to kill anybody or you don't have to be killed. It is through your good deed and serving humanity you can come to that uh, elevation. So you're, you're saying then, Baram, if I've got this correctly, that these young men and women that strap explosives to themselves and blow themselves up in public places, they may think they're being martyrs, they may think there'll be a special reward, but that's not what Sufism says. Well, our understanding of Quran is uh, there is a there is a concept called jihad, means uh, to move from ignorant into light. Uh, so, jihad is nothing is not a political concept the way it's been used today among politicians. It's basically 
mean what I said, moving from darkness or ignorance into light. Okay? So when a person comes to light, when they realize they all are expression of God and they belong to the one reality, then they will have greater understanding. And because we never see God, there is no, there isn't God is not a human or any kind of form that we can uh, serve. The only way, can, only way we can serve God is through serving other humanity. And everybody has a different way of life. We cannot judge them. We must love everybody without condition or without any prejudice. One of the things I'm having a problem with here, uh, Baram, is what exactly is Sufism? Is it like, say, in Christianity, you have a number of different sects, you have Protestant churches, you have a Catholic church, and, and if we were to compare, you would be one of those? Or would it be more like, uh, let's say, the Anglican church, which has a low church and a high church, and the high church is different? Or is it something that stands on its own in Islam? No, Sufism is not a doctrine or it's not uh, a sect. Sufism, as I said, is a reality of submission. So uh, when you say, I submit to the will of God, it doesn't mean that you do it through force. There is, in Quran, it says there is no compulsion in religion. So you must do it through your own will and through love. So you submit uh, your will to the will of God by love, by uh, grace. If we understand the three great religions that came from East, uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, Judaism stands for law. The law is very simple. They call it shariat in Islam. Is that we should respect and we should be grateful to the other human beings. Or we, we should, in today's term, we can say we should respect every individual's democratic right. That is shariat, right? So if I steal for, from you, I am actually denying you of your right. That is the meaning of the law. Now, in order for the law to be practiced, you cannot force people. It must happen through grace. And that's where Jesus Christ comes into it. Christianity comes into it. Before Christ, everything happened through force. Now, with coming of Jesus, he says, no, this, is, this must happen through your grace. So in Islamic understanding, so Moses stands for the law. Jesus comes for the grace vehicle of love from, to take you from where you are to the presence of God. Now, then Prophet Muhammad comes. He brings knowledge. He says, look, there is law, there is grace, but you must gain knowledge. And Can I stop you there and sure. ask you to hold that thought? Because sure. I think this is going to be a very interesting start to the next section sure. of the segment. More of Sufism with my guest, Barham Haidari, when the search continues. <laughs> 